Hello, and welcome to Aviation Deep Dive. Essentially a modified US Douglas DC-3, the Soviet Lishunov Li-2 was a pretty fascinating look at how far certain countries would take their modifications to turn aircraft of a certain role into something completely different. The Li-2, based off a transport, would end up being turned into an armed bomber, with certain variants carrying up to 2600 kilograms or 5700 pounds of bombs, and being fitted with defensive guns, different engines, over 1,000 small design modifications, and even a pilot-controlled machine gun firing forwards. The story of this aircraft and its bizarre and interesting operational conversion dates back to the mid-1930s. In 1935, the Soviet Union received its first DC-2, which apparently made something of an impression on them, as in April the following year they ordered 21 DC-3s, essentially an upscaled version. The DC-3, in its own right a legendary aircraft, was well liked by the Soviets rather quickly, and by July that year they had successfully purchased a production license, and sent Boris Pavlovich Lishunov and a small group of engineers to America to start work translating the factory documentation from Douglas. The original intention to make short work and simple work of the license production ended up being a pipe dream, as almost three years had passed before the Russian engineers were finishing up their work in America. Not only that, the engineers, in order to standardize certain parts and elements of production to metric units, had ended up with 1,293 changes required to the design. By April 1939, most of the groundwork had been completed. The aircraft would be powered by two 900 horsepower Soviet Ash-62 radials, which would actually have about 300 less horsepower than the 1200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R1830s used on the DC-3, even though the Li-2 would be slightly heavier. Uncharacteristically moving through the Soviet bureaucracy at lightning speed, the aircraft was announced ready for production and began rolling off the production lines back into the Soviet Union in late 1939, designated as the PS-84. Carrying 14 to 28 passengers, the aircraft entered service as an airliner and continued growing in number, amounting to 72 examples produced by mid-1941. Despite how the aircraft would end up being used, up until this point, the PS-84 was intended solely as an airliner and was used as such. Indeed, the conversion to a bomber or gunship would be slightly out of the blue considering the aircraft's lack of a bomb bay, the voluminous fuselage clearly intended for carrying cargo or passengers, and the relatively low speed, which had only gotten slower with the introduction of the lower power Soviet engines. However, the German invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941 prompted an almost overnight change in conception for the PS-84. The aircraft was swiftly taken out of their previous airliner and transport duties and pressed into military service. Thereafter redesignated the Lishunov Li-2. The industry producing them was also moved in an enormous effort eastward to try and reduce the possibility of it being overrun by German troops from the west, which coincided with the alteration on the production line to the new Li-2 military variant. The aircraft would differ significantly from the American military conversion of the same basic aircraft, the C-47. The Li-2 opted to include a dorsal turret, fitted with a 7.62mm Chicasse machine gun, although this would later be replaced by a 12.7mm UBT heavy machine gun. Further, two 7.62s were fitted in side positions at the rear fuselage. The aircraft's first use en masse would be during the Siege of Leningrad, where Li 2s would deliver 5,000 tons of goods and evacuated 50,000 people, including 9,000 wounded soldiers. The aircraft would also fly weapons, medical supplies, and food to the city, sometimes on non stop back and forth operations that would see the crews make six or seven journeys a night. The aircraft's adoption into more direct combat roles necessitated making it more fit for combat, however. The initial design changes to make it suitable for military use made the aircraft decently well protected for an aircraft of its type, 
although the conversions wouldn't stop there. Shortly after, in 1942, as the production lines in the East began to pick up the rate and get settled into the new routine, some more significant alterations were introduced. The Vargeni variant, dubbed the Li2VV, simply meaning military variant in Russian, would introduce a redesigned nose cone to allow mounting of a forward-facing machine gun, although in many cases it was simply removed by the crew. It simply added weight to an already heavy aircraft, and in the words of Li2 pilot Nikolai Sishkov, Крупнокалиберный пулемет УБ и два пулемета ШКАС, расположенных по бортам, устанавливались на все самолеты этого типа. Ранее в передней части самолета также размещали вооружение, но в конечном итоге от него избавились за ненадобностью. Все-таки Ли-2 было очень сложно назвать истребителем. Indeed, the aircraft had virtually no chance of using its forward-facing gun against fighters, being about as maneuverable as a school bus made out of lead, but it did perhaps have some utility for strafing or suppressing ground fire on a bombing run. By the summer of 1942, installations of hard points under the fuselage allowed the aircraft to carry up to four 250 kilogram or 550 pound bombs. These bomber conversions would see their heyday during the Battle of Stalingrad, used as night bombers. Under the cover of darkness, they would take off from small strips of land along the west bank of the Volga River, fly over German-occupied areas of Stalingrad, and release their payload. It must be said that if an Li-2 was to be intercepted by a fighter aircraft such as a 109, it would stand a fairly low chance. By this point in the war, its payload, speed and defensive armament would all be considered very light for any kind of bomber. Even high-speed bombers such as the British Mosquito had a higher payload, carried internally, and the Li-2 was certainly not a high-speed bomber. At lower altitudes, it would be flying at anywhere from 250 to 300 kilometers an hour, about 150 to 190 miles an hour. A Bf 109 G2 a type used extensively during late 1942, would top out at around 537 kilometers an hour, or 334 miles an hour, at low level. If the Li-2s were intercepted, they would realistically be sitting ducks, hence why they were used more at night. The durability was commendable though. The aircraft used heavier gauge skin than its American counterpart, and various components were slightly upscaled during metrification, making it heavier built than the DC-3. During its night bombing missions, crews would often even bring supplemental smaller bombs with them in the cabin, which they would then throw out of the back door whilst over German territory, in a move more reminiscent of bombing missions of World War I. Still, the Li-2s would see the majority of their service as transports for men and materials along the enormous length of the Eastern Front, a task the Li-2 was well suited to. They would be present in all of the major tactical and operational airdrops on the Eastern Front through 1942 and 43, and were generally well liked by the men that crewed them and the paratroopers that had to jump out of them over enemy lines. The Li-2 would indeed become a loved aircraft of the Soviet Union. The man who had been responsible for its initial transposition from American to Soviet industry, the aircraft's namesake, Boris Pavlovich Lysunov, was awarded the Order of Lenin and the Order of the Red Star for his hand with the aircraft. Soviet authorities insisted on continued production for the aircraft right up until the end of the war. After a peak production of 627 in 1944 and 458 in 45, production petered off considerably after the German surrender. Although commercial versions of Li-2s, which were essentially just airliners converted to military transports converted to bombers converted back to civilian transports, continued to be produced in smaller numbers until 1954. In total, just over 6,000 aircraft had been produced by the time the last one rolled off the production line, in no less than 16 variants. Post-war, the aircraft would trickle down into various air forces in Eastern Europe, some Li-2s ending up in Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and many others. Some found their way to China, staying in service until 1986, and even to North Korea, who still use a few of the aircraft and have been spotted at air bases. 
Ultimately, the aircraft was a much-loved and well-performing aircraft in its initial role. Even as a bomber, a conversion that was fairly at odds with various elements of its design, the aircraft had some success, and developed an overwhelmingly positive reputation amongst the crews that flew it. Its reliability is fairly evident in the fact that it stayed in service for decades after its initial service, and in some specific cases still is. A number of Li-2s survive today, at aircraft museums in Moscow, China, Hungary, Poland, and even North Korea, although you probably won't be visiting that one anytime soon. A huge thanks to my patrons on screen now for supporting the channel, and thank you so much for watching this video of Aviation Deep Dive. Consider liking and subscribing for more weekly content, and please also consider supporting us on Patreon. See you in the skies.